We are back with uh, former state rep Chris Niedermeyer, who is talking about all of this union happenings with the governor and the state. And Chris, you wanted to talk about, particularly about uh, some serious deadlines over the next few weeks and, and why you think that puts pressure on either coming up with a deal or, or not. Well, as of July 1st, layoff notices started going out. Right now, I think close to 2,000 layoff notices of the 6,500 that the governor plans have gone out. None of them have actually taken effect. I understand they will take effect on August 2nd. So that's a very short time frame, a little bit of a week beyond where we are today. Uh, the second is, as of July 1st, without this agreement being ratified, state employees are entitled to 3% salary increases. And the good news, bad news, the good news is that that won't take effect. They will not be paid that until the 29th of July because there's a two-week lag in the payment. So for the first two weeks of July, from what I understand, their paychecks will come through on July 29th. So, but that's the com this coming Friday. So there's a very small window within which to, then it becomes even more complicated. Then you've actually given money out, you've laid people <laughs> off. And the other side effect of that is with, with the serious problems the state has, I mean, we have fewer employees now, people employed, than we did in 1987 statewide, mm -hmm. private public sector. And you are taking the time of commissioners and managers in the state all to do and undo this situation. And, and, and they need to be spending their resources and their time on addressing state problems. You know, particularly about the pay raises, will that necessarily be undone? I mean, first of all, I mean, hopefully... If a deal came through, they could halt it, right, before the raises went out. I don't know what their pay cycle is. But, I mean, isn't it difficult to give people money and then say, well, we're going to take it back now? It, it is. And I understand uh, from some of the reports that, that what Marco Jake on behalf of the state is doing now is trying to negotiate with the union to the extent any of that money is paid out, where it will come back in so that it will be a wash. Because paying out $5 million every two weeks is, is what the 3% increase is from the state coffers only gets us deeper in the hole. Right, right. So, um... What happens if, do you think that there is a possibility that there won't be any deal? I think it's very slim. I, I, I think the governor and, and the unions now, I think the unions um, faced a neg very negative uh, feedback from the citizens of the state when the first deal wasn't approved. Yeah. And I think they know that uh, for their future, there needs to be a deal. I mean, it, it, we have a 9.1% employment unemployment rate. If it goes higher with these layoffs, it's going to create more problems in the rest of the state. And, you know, if they can buy on to this deal or something close to it, I think that's the best for all parties. There are some people, I mean, and there might be skeptics, who say that this was all a foregone conclusion, that this was all manipulation, that they had a deal and then the unions wanted to look strong, so they rejected it, and then the governor wanted to look strong, so he sent out the layoff notices, but, but that actually this was where we were going to be all along. I mean, is that too... Um... Well, <laughs> I, think, I think many people believe there was going to be a deal all mm -hmm. along. I do feel, and this is just a, something that I've picked up, but I, I can't verify it from all corners, but there's a certain uh, acrimony among a lot of the parties. Understandable when you're in this sort of situation when the governor has, you know, a $3.5 billion deficit breathing down his back and, and I think is the first governor in quite some time to try to honestly address it. Uh, some of the union folks I've talked to believe that the governor has been a little too forceful and arrogant with them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the governor's people said you were offered a very sweet deal uh, two or three months ago and you should have been grateful for it given all the people in the private sector they are going through the suffering they are. So when you have that, which is probably true in many union negotiations, I know when I oversaw the collective bargaining subcommittee, the contracts would come before our subcommittee, and you could tell in our first meetings with both sides that nobody was really happy most of the time. Yeah. But, but you just have to try to do your best to come up with an agreement that both sides can live with and that serves the, the state of Connecticut. Well, certainly when you were um, doing that, there was a completely different um, economic climate. But what was, how different was it um, even politically here in Connecticut when you were um, in the thrush of of collective bargaining here? Well, it, it was almost as if collective bargaining contracts were to be seen and not heard. Um, when I was offered the chairmanship of the committee, I was a fairly junior legislator, and I was so excited to be given this opportunity. Yeah. And then I found out that not too many legislators wanted to do it because it was fairly controversial, and they'd rather just have a small group deal mm -hmm. with the review of it. And some of the contracts, many of them, were not even voted on on the floor. They just went through automatically. Wow. So, um, but, you know, that was before the income tax and certainly right, before right. this recession and, and the economic stress that many people are under. And so 
you know, state employees have suffered as well as the taxpayers and others in the state. So I'm wondering, I mean, as you've been watching things going on in other states, I mean, certainly Connecticut's not the only state wrangling with the unions. I mean, for instance, in Wisconsin, um, it, some people say that that was a long time coming. I mean, do you, did you see that coming? And, and what do you think that the future uh, of collective bargaining is here in Connecticut? Well, I, I think bashing unions doesn't really get you anywhere, no matter which side you're on. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a moderate sort of uh, individual, and I'm not, I don't think I'm in one camp or the other. But I, but I think in terms of coming with a solution that can address the fiscal problems of your state, the last thing you want to do is blame them individually. Uh, and I think when it gets personal, as it did in Wisconsin, and as I think it has done with Governor Christie in New Jersey, you undermine your ability to come to some reasonable uh, solution. So um, I, I, I do think Governor Malloy took the right tact here. I, I would, would have been a little forceful a little bit earlier to force something through uh, and then get the budget and everything approved before the end of June. But uh, I don't know, you know the difficulties day to day his staff encountered. So um, for, maybe you can give us some insight. So what's actually happening behind those closed doors with, with Mark or Jake Ann and, and the union leadership? Well, the unions have been meeting, you know, almost every day now uh -huh. trying to come up with, I understand some of the unions aren't happy with the 10 that voted to lower the, the percentage approval from 80% right. uh, to majority. So, and um, I'm sure they're crunching numbers every day, but now, now their big problem is to try to communicate the information out to the rank and file. They need to churn up a communication shop and get the unions to churn up their sh communication shops. So some of the smaller unions all over the state, not just the major ones, uh, are going to be well informed. It, it should be much easier with the 50 percent approval, but you still want to make sure that people understand what's Was that the right proposed. move for them to do to change those bylaws? Because there is, uh, even among people who support the deal, some people thought, well, I don't know, isn't that kind of like changing the rules well, you know, to if get I were the a union member, I don't think I'd be too happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if that, if that was, but see, that's what's happened over time in the state. You know, we, we, we're a crisis mode. And, and, you know, the state needs to get back to doing things more methodically. Mm -hmm. They need to get back to, you know, the rainy day fund that was raided. Uh, we're bonding uh, operating expenses that in years past weren't. And so our debt service has gone up. Moody's just said two or three weeks ago that they've changed Connecticut's forecast from stable to negative. Now, that has a major impact in the interest rate we, we pay. And all, it's all because... We're dealing things in a crisis mode, and when the unions didn't approve this agreement toward the end of June, end of June, Moody's changes their, their, their mode. So we need to get back to beyond this. The governor needs to decide what can we do. Uh, we need to prioritize what we can do. There needs to be a safety net, and that'll never be a cost-effective, profitable program. But we need to decide what we can afford to do, just like families do in this economy, and and implement a structure in the budget approval process and in the legislature to implement that. Interesting. Chris Niedermeyer, thanks very much for being here. Thank I'd you. I'd love to have you back. Great to be great here. Perspective. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Coming up, the deadline is fast approaching on a billion-dollar federal program that's helping homeowners to save their homes. Thank you.